Welcome to Mason Noise Math Lab. Hopefully you, you watched the video on the pure premium method. Uh, I now I'll link it up here in the right hand corner so that you can go back and watch that for other details I don't explain here but there was a video I made last week on the fundamental insurance equation. I've just written it down here again. Uh, if you recall this equation just comes from the very basic and straightforward idea that profit equals revenue minus cost. Um, I want to go over something now called the loss ratio method. Now, um, I have some kind of abbreviations here. I have some some variables, if you if you will, uh, some symbols to um, to write some of this stuff more compactly. Um, and some of these are actually a little bit different than what I gave on the previous video for the pure premium method. So, um, I mean, self-explanatory, I have these written out, uh, and I'll kind of explain a little more as I go. Uh, but if you remember, we have losses uh, plus loss adjustment expense plus underwriting expense. Remember, underwriting expense is going to consist of commissions and brokerage, uh, other acquisition, general, and then taxes, license, and fees. And I've gone over some of these concepts in a previous video, so I'll, maybe I'll link that above as well. Um, but, and then I have uh, underwriting profit here, right? An underwriting profit we typically give uh, as a percentage. So this actually is a percentage of premium. And, and I, I will be giving a video soon of an example of this, of the kind of test question you'll see. So you will understand what I'm talking about. But usually this is like 5% or 4% uh, or 20% <laughs> if you want to make a lot of money. So. Uh, this is what we have, and now I want to derive uh, the the average indicated rate level change. So the loss ratio method. So a loss ratio is the losses divided by premium. Usually it's reported losses and a lay, or actually lay, L-A-E, divided by earned premium. Earned premium is usually used associated with reported losses because as you earn premium throughout a specific period, that ties in uh, more directly with losses as opposed to written premium. Written premium is just all at one date, the date of inception. Earned premium, you actually slowly earn that in. So it ties more, uh, I think more consistently with losses. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, I have this at current rates and this should already kind of allude to an idea that is the loss ratio method is used when you already have an established book of business typically and actually in practice for the company I work for right now we almost well we exclusively use the loss ratio method because what we're gonna get here is a percentage increase or decrease and when you file with the Department of Insurance this is what you typically do is you file you say okay we already have rates uh, enacted for a specific group of policyholders and line of business now I want to justify to the Department of Insurance a rate increase or decrease and this is the method we do I mean, this is literally what you do on the job so Let's go ahead and do this. Uh, let me give myself some room. So what we're gonna do, a little bit different than the prior video, is we're gonna rephrase this equation in terms of kind of what's currently happening right now. Um, and actually, well, yeah. So we have the premium at current rates is equal to uh, the losses plus the loss adjustment expense. Uh, plus, now the underwriting expense, recall, can be written as the fixed expense um, plus the variable expense. Okay, so real quick, fixed expenses could be things like uh, the overhead cost for renting a building or purchasing a building. Uh, variable expense could be things like commissions. Remember, we're underwriting expense, we had the commissions and brokerage. Okay, that's gonna, those, 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 uh, the, the money that we pay for agents getting us business usually depends on how much they write. And we usually want them to write favorable business, profitable business, so it's gonna depend on premium. So some of our expenses are fixed and some of our expenses are variable. Now underwriting profit, I'm gonna write it actually as QC. This is gonna be the profit provision or profit ratio where premium's a denominator at current rates. Everything is at current. And I, best, I guess I, I can't remember if I wrote indicated or what the hell I wrote a second ago? I think I wrote a current. Man, I'm good. Okay. So, um, let's continue with this. Let's continue with this. So, uh, this is equal to um, what? This is equal to what? So, 
if you think about it, uh, I'm looking for a percent increase or decrease to get from uh, my current profit to my indicated profit. So I can write down uh, a couple of things. Okay, let me just write them down over here, I guess. So just a sort of side note, um, the indicated premium, the indicated premium is going to be the, the current premium times one plus I. So I, I'm gonna call I is the indicated average rate level change. Okay, and that means that if I wanted to get from the indicated or the target profit provision, the target profit, QT, is equal to whatever the profit is right now times one plus I. So just some side definitions, let's go ahead and use those now. So what I'm saying here is that the indicated uh, premium Actually, damn it. Bear with me, bear with me. Let's change these to I's because this is actually, this is actually the equation I started with on the previous video. Now let's change this to a T. When I did the video for the pure premium method, this is what I started with. I wanna kinda of be consistent. These of course are equivalent and I'll show that in the example. But PI, this is equal to the premium current times one plus I, right? I mean, I just wrote it over there. Do you think, I mean, it makes sense. Is equal to the loss plus the loss adjustment expense plus the fixed expense. Now I wanna rewrite uh, the variable expense. The variable expense we can write it in terms of V again as I did last time. So V times, V times the indicated premium, but the indicated premium is the current premium times one plus I. And then I have, um, and then I have my profit. So let's give that as well. So plus my profit, and um, I guess I should have, I should have written this with a I here as well, right? This is what I had uh, before. So remember that the profit provision is a percentage of premium. So if I want this as a dollar amount, I can multiply by premium, the indicated premium. Because remember the denominator of QT is PI. So they cancel out, it gives me a dollar amount right here. It's not a percentage anymore. So plus, this is going to be uh, QT, the uh, target profit times the premium at current times the average indicated rate level factor. I is the average indicated rate level change. When I add one to it, it's a factor. It becomes multiplicative. Now what? I'll do the same thing as before. I'm gonna combine everything. I'm gonna combine everything. I'm gonna get one plus I on the left-hand side. This tells me that one plus I, the indicated rate level, the average indicated rate level factor times the current premium is equal to uh, times something else, right? Times one minus V minus the target profit is equal to the loss, the loss plus the loss adjustment expense plus the fixed expense, and that's it. So let's divide by the rest. I mean, we're in good shape, right? So this tells me that I have uh, the following. And let's, I mean, do I even need to bore you with the algebra? I mean, you guys are freaking professional algebraists. Algebraist? Yeah, someone who practices algebra? Yeah, okay. So this is one plus I is equal to loss plus loss adjustment expense plus fixed expense divided by the premium at current divided by the premium at current divided by one minus the variable minus the profit. So, and actually, let's just subtract one as well. Let's subtract one. So I minus one. This is what I want. This is exactly what I wanted right here. This is using the loss ratio method. This is the percentage. This is, let me write it again. This is the average indicated rate level change. Okay. 
I may be thinking, first of all, a couple of things. Is this equivalent to the pure premium method? Yes, and I'll show you how. Uh, furthermore, what is this number? This is a percentage. This gives you a percentage. A percentage increase or decrease of what you want to do. Think about what we said here. This is saying basically, if I take the premium at current rates, so this should already say to yourself, okay, I need premium current rates. In other words, this already has to be an established line of business. This has to be some business where we've been writing for a while to where we already have premium at current rates. How much should I increase or decrease that, that amount of premium to get to the indicated premium, right? Again, this is, uh, if you saw my previous video, let me just expand upon that again real quick, is that the idea is that we're gonna take an instance right now and we're gonna pick some time in the future, that's how we do the actuarial stuff, we're gonna project our expenses, our profit, our losses into the future, and we're gonna say, what are they valued at? How much do we need to increase or decrease by to get to that indicated, indicated premium? And so this is a percentage increase or decrease. And as I mentioned before, this is typically what you file to the Department of Insurance. We have to justify, we have to use all this actuarial stuff to justify, okay, can we do an increase or decrease to current rates? Um, I guess that's all I wanna say right now. Uh, I feel like there's a million things to say about this, but I'm gonna have to get into it again later on. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I appreciate you watching the video. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel.